right, so uh, first things first, up under the steering column, you got this big white connector. What you're gonna do is end up poking this out of here, and then you're gonna take our T-harness here, plug it in to the mating connector, and then take the OEM style, plug it back in to the factory plug, and then you can zip tie this all nice and neat. Follow down the loom here, and then you're gonna bring this um, main connector from our harness, let's see if I get this over here to the left, because our remote start's actually gonna reside right back up in here. So before I put this in the car, I'm gonna show you guys a few things about it. Um, this is the 30 pin BCM connector. This is the OBD2 connector. Uh, we have a red and a white connector up here that plug into the remote start module. And then we have a medium connector that plugs into the remote start module. And then we have an orange wire, which is needed to be hooked up if you have a OEM alarm system. If you do not have an alarm system, you don't have to hook this up. But um, if you don't hook it up and you have an alarm, uh, your horn's gonna honk when you remote start it. Um, also on this harness, you have a 12 pin connector. The first connector we'll go ahead and plug in on the secondary harness is gonna be the OBD2 connector right here. So basically what you're gonna do is pop this out of the mounting tab, plug it into our black port, and then plug our white OBD2 back into this bracket. So let me do that real quick and I'll show you what it's gonna look like. All right, so now that we have that plugged in, you can see here's the factory connector, plugged it into the T harness, and then um, our white one pokes right back in, locks into the bracket like OEM. So the next harness that we're gonna do is right back in here, which is the BCM connector. As you can see, there's a couple white connectors that are gonna resemble uh, the same shape as ours. Only one of them is gonna fit, okay? so. Um, the bottom one is not it. It's typically this um, middle one and you can't see it, but there's a third one up here too. So grab this middle one right here. It just pokes right out. And then you're gonna plug our harness into it. And then go ahead and plug our factory style straight back into the BCM. That leaves us with uh, one more T harness, which is a 12 pin. And this is actually up right up here to the left. Um, I have it unplugged, it's dangling here. Let me see if I can get an actual image of it here. You can see right there where it plugs in. So it's a black box, way up above the emergency brake, and it's almost to the, uh, the side of the vehicle. And this is the plug that you're gonna unplug from it. But you can clearly see right here what it looks like. So once you have that unplugged and accessible, you can go ahead and plug our T-harness back into it and you'll be good to go. And then you plug the factory one right back up in there. And that's it. All right, so before um, we can program the module, we have two wires that we need to hook up uh, plus the ground wire. So on this 30 pin BCM, um, you need to tap into one wire and it's gonna be this blue one. It's gonna be this blue one right here. So from the bottom right hand corner, it's gonna be the sixth one in. We need to put a tap on that and then the orange wire that is on our remote start harness, um, which is the one that's coiled up, this orange one gets attached to that blue one. This is the factory alarm disarm wire. This will prevent the horn from honking um, when you remote start your vehicle if you have an OEM alarm. If you do not have the OEM alarm, um, you do not have to do this. So the process is simple. Um, for the OEM alarm disarm wire, you basically just need to uncoil the orange wire. You're going to strip back about three quarters of an inch to an inch. You're going to twist it. You're going to fold it in half. Then you're going to take the red spade connector, insert it in here, crimp it down, 
And the reason that we fold it in half is just to give it a little bit more thickness, um, give it a good tug, make sure it's on there, and then you're gonna attach it to that black spade that we put on the OEM disarm alarm wire. Uh, then go ahead and reinsert the 30 pin connector here. And that portion is done. The next one that we need to attach is gonna be from this little guy right here. This plugs into the module and then you have the long green one. Um, and then we have the black one from the module that has the ring terminal on it. And both of these are gonna go down to the kick panel area right here. Just kind of follow the wire loom, you know, bring it around and down and you um, just undo this 10 millimeter bolt with a socket or ratchet reinstall it and then uh, tweak her back down um, but the green wire from here you're gonna run it the same way that you ran the ground wire if you can see right here this is the kick panel so we have a big it looks like a white and uh, black with a white stripe at the very bottom plug then we have a white one small yellow medium yellow and it's the white one right above that Okay, so this is it. I already topped the wire so you guys can see. But when it's positioned like this, it's gonna be that black one right there in the middle next to the red uh, in between the white, black, and red. So it's this one right here. And this is gonna be our lock signal wire that's gonna go ahead and let us start on the three locks. Um, on the module, go ahead and plug everything in except for this big white one right here. So um, on the front side here, go ahead and plug the medium white connector in. On the back side, you're obviously going to have the red's going to match to the red. The white one matches to the white. The next blue one would be for our phone module. Um, we're actually not putting it in this vehicle, but um, uh, that would be for aftermarket remotes or our cell phone module, the other ones you're not going to use. Um, the only other thing that we're going to plug in is this little, on the front, it's a three pin black connector. Um, you're actually going to plug our white one into it. Okay, um, next we're going to go ahead, grab the big fat wired ignition harness and what you're going to do is push and hold this button on the back side. You're going to insert the big connector into the module. The lights are going to cycle through a whole bunch of different colors. So you got blue, red, amber, red and blue at the same time. And when they're red and blue at the same time, release that button. So they're going to cycle red, blue, amber, red, blue, and they're going to keep on going. Make sure that you release it when they're red and blue. If you accidentally release it on a different color, just go ahead and unplug this big connector push and hold it reinsert it and then you know attempt to get it again but they have to be red and blue uh, then you're gonna push the button two times so one two it's gonna blink pause blink pause it's gonna keep doing that now grab the key put it in the ignition and turn it on don't start the vehicle all we're doing is turning the ignition on so let me go ahead and do that. The lights are gonna go out, then the red and blue are gonna start blinking. They're gonna go out, and then the blue light starts blinking. And then we're done. So let it blink for three to five seconds. Go ahead and turn the key off, and uh, close the door and try it out. So let me close the door here and we'll give you a demo of it real quick. All right guys, so we got the uh, G key Sienna finished up. Uh, I'm gonna give you a demo real quick. So right now, the doors are locked. Okay, so how this works is we're gonna push the lock button on the factory key fob three times. So you can see that. Lock, lock, lock. Give it a couple seconds. So the door is just unlocked. It cranks. And then about five seconds later, they're gonna relock. So you'll hear them here in a second, maybe. But once they lock, you can see the ignition's on. So our doors are locked now. When you come out here, you're gonna push the unlock button 
and you'll be able to get in. Now you can turn this off the same way you start it with the lock button three times, but you have to wait uh, roughly 20 to 25 seconds after it's running for the three locks to turn it off. Um, if you do it before 20 seconds, it could be one push or two push on the lock button and it's gonna kill the engine. So you basically have to let the three lock situate, everything settle down. After 20 seconds, you can push lock, 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 and now we're turned off. So I'm gonna wait 20 more seconds and we will go ahead and start it back up. All right, so we got our 20 seconds up, so let me punch this again. So lock, lock, lock. It unlocks, it cranks, and then we'll relock. I still got the whole inside tore apart here, but let me, uh, so it just relocks. So um, when you come out to it, you're just gonna hit the unlock button one time. The doors will unlock. You can enter the vehicle, it stays running. So, see our tack over here? We're still on. Um, I can't get in here because of the crap on the floor, but um, to drive away, you basically just need to put the key in the ignition, turn it forward two clicks, so it's in the on position. And now, uh, when you hit the brake pedal, the remote start will turn off, you'll see the parking lights blink, um, and now you can drive away. You can see the tack over here, and uh, radio comes on and you just drive away. So if you guys have any questions, please let us know.